Hi everyone, welcome to Carson City Libraries Computers for Beginners video tutorial on the mouse. My name is Vanna Bells and I am the Creative Learning Librarian where we offer programs for all ages. I've adapted this in-person class for you to learn at your own pace. This lesson is an abbreviated version of what is offered at the library. The library has a dedicated computer lab to teach people all the keys of the keyboard as we are all using different brands of keyboards and different devices, such as desktop computers versus laptops versus tablets versus smartphones, I will do my best to teach you what you need to know right now. Keyboards look different depending on the brand you buy and the device you're using. Generally, keyboards are larger on desktop computers and smaller on laptops. Many of the keys found on the laptop and desktop computers are not found on your smartphone or tablet. Many of the keys might be in different places. There are also keyboards designed for the visually impaired, or you can purchase large print stickers to place on your current keyboard. Here are some of the keys we are going to learn today. Pat yourself on the back if you know some of these already. We'll be going over volume. If you're using a laptop, screen brightness and dimness, tab, caps lock, shift, windows key, numbers and symbols, letters, enter or return, delete and backspace. Let's learn the keys on the keyboard. This is the tab button. If you were using a Word document, you would use this tab button to go five spaces. So this is for indenting a paragraph. If you were using this tab button on the internet, say you were filling out a job application, you would use this button to go from one field to the next field. For instance, this is the example of the tab button in a Word document. I've already written out the word hello and the tab button, if I press it, it moves it five spaces or indents. This is the library website and I want to show you how to use the tab button in an online form. Normally you would have to register on our calendar to attend a program and you would have to fill out this registration form but because we're doing virtual programming we're not requiring registration for all these programs so I'm going to show you a different place to fill out a form on the library website so let's find another form to sign up for something to show you how to use the tab button as an example. So to subscribe to the library newsletter, I went to the bottom of the website and clicked on subscribe to the library newsletter. And then if I wanted to subs subscribe to all the newsletters, I'm gonna click in this box. And then I'm pressing the tab button and it takes me to the first field that's available on the webpage. So this is the first field. So I'm gonna type in my name. And again, I use the tab button to get to the next field. And I did that so fast because it's second nature to me. So again, I'm going to press tab and it takes me to the next field. So I'm going to, this is the email address that you can reach me so I can answer all your questions at creativelearning at carsoncitylibrary.org. I would, I'm using the scroll wheel that you learned in the, in the mouse video to go to the bottom of the page, I'm gonna click on I'm not a robot and then I'm gonna press subscribe. Caps lock, this, if you press this button, some keyboards will have a light that indicates that the caps lock button is on. When it's on, all the letters that you type will be uppercase. So if this is off, all the letters you type will be lowercase. The shift key 
is when you, you use this in conjunction with another key. You hardly use this by itself. So when you write your first name and your last name, the first letters of each of your name are capitalized. So you would use the shift key and the first letter of your name and it'll be an uppercase letter. So I would do shift plus V for the uppercase V as in Vanna. And then I would not use the shift key anymore for the A N N A. You would use the shift key to get these symbols here. So right now, if you press this button by itself, you're just going to get the number one, two, three, so on and so forth. But if you use the shift key in conjunction with these keys, you'll get those punctuation marks. So you're going to get the top row. Same thing with these here. Okay. The Windows key, again, this lesson is only for Windows 10 users. This key opens up the start menu on your laptop or a computer. That is the purpose of this key, the main purpose of this key. This is the space bar. You tap on it once to provide a space in between words. You can also do double space, which is tapping this twice. And then there's two spaces between words. Some people do double spacing between the end of a sentence and the beginning of a sentence. Some people think it's easier to read on the page. Double spacing can also mean um, writing a line of text and then, and then having a space between lines. In, in that case, you would use the enter button twice. If you're using a Word document, if you're typing in a letter or a resume, you would press this Enter key to go to the next line of the page. Some keyboards will say Enter and Return. Some keyboards have two Enters, this one and this one. The Control button and the Alt button are keys that you would use in conjunction with another key to perform an action. These are called keyboard shortcuts. Back in the day, um, before the mouse, you had to tell the computer what to do and you would do so by using keyboard shortcuts, so combinations of keys to do a task. With the mouse and now with tablets and smartphones, you don't see these keys hardly anymore. There are other ways to tell the computer or the phone to do the task that you need. So it's not important to learn these for a beginner. These keys will definitely be helpful uh, once you're used to the keyboard and you feel more comfortable and confident with the keyboard. So I hope to have an intermediate class perhaps. Some of these keys that I mentioned um, we'll have two keys. I forgot to mention that shift is on the left and on the right, and then there's also two Windows keys depending on your keyboard. Now let's take a look at the backspace and the delete buttons. Both of these keys are used to erase text. However, when dealing with text, pressing the delete key deletes text to the right of the cursor. See the A was to the right of the cursor. And so that's what I used. I used the delete key and then backspace deletes the text to the left or backwards of the cursor. So if I press the backspace button, it's gonna erase the R. The purpose of using, of knowing the difference between the keys is to help you save some seconds of time when you're writing uh, documents. So if you're writing a lot of, uh, if you're writing a document and you're making uh, some uh, spelling errors, instead of you using the backspace button to delete everything, 
you can use the backspace or delete button to precisely fix what you wrote instead of having to erase everything that you just did just to fix one mistake. So let's try that again. I spelled Carson City Library wrong, but let me just erase city and I'm going to move my mouse here and I'm just gonna use the delete button to, to erase city. Now, if I wanna get of Carson, now is it, and then leaving my cursor there, and if I wanna get rid of the word Carson, yes, I'm gonna use the backspace button. So now my sentence says, welcome to the library. So go ahead and practice uh, the different, uh, practice the backspace and the delete button. So you looked at the computer keyboard. Let me show you what it looks like on a laptop keyboard. This is an HP Elite laptop keyboard. See here, uh, let's talk about the Windows key. There's only one key here instead of two because the key, laptop keyboard is smaller. I forgot to mention that this here is the numeric keypad. It's also called the 10 keypad. And you can see here on the laptop, it's not there. This is to save space. The words are a little bit blurry. I did mention that you can buy stickers to put on your laptop if you have a hard time seeing the keys. Also, some laptops will have lights underneath the keys so you can see them better if you are using your laptop at night. This is an example of volume and screen brightness and dimness buttons. This is a Lenovo laptop. In order to use those buttons, you also have to press the function button at the same time. The escape button is used to quit a program or leave a program. I know this class isn't to teach you how to use your smart devices and tablets. That's a whole other class that I could teach many, um, I could produce many videos on. I just wanted to show you how the evolution of keyboards have changed. I mentioned that you know, we don't have the control um, key on here. Some phones do have the control key, but this one doesn't. And there's a lot less buttons on this keyboard. And then this is the caps lock button. It's not, it doesn't say caps lock, it's just the up arrow. And then this is the backspace button and this is the enter button. So instead of words, because this keyboard is so tiny, they have um, icons. Learning how to type takes practice. Do not get frustrated with yourself. And it's harder to learn how to type when you switch from one device to another, like such switching from the touch screen on your phone to the keyboard on your computer. Although the library does not have keyboarding books, we recommend using the following free websites to learn and practice keyboarding skills. Typingclub.com has typing games. And then my favorite website is GCF Global, uh, where this offers free typing tutorial. As always, if you have questions, feel free to email creativelearning at carsoncitylibrary.org. And please fill out the survey in the video description to let us know how else we can help you. Thank you so much for watching. Stay strong, Carson City. Bye.